Welcome to Then. This is Dr. Pat Rush presenting Breakthrough Science about the connections between trauma, health equity, and neurobiology. By the end of this brief video, you will see health and disease in a different light, and you can apply this new knowledge in your teaching, research, and patient care. We are dedicated to improving health and we expect medical science to be based on the latest research and promote a deep understanding of health. We expect our system of care to be effective, inclusive, and compassionate. Universal access and health equity must be a priority. Meet the four of us co-founders of THEN. Through our decades of experience, we recognize the huge role that trauma, discrimination, and structural racism play in disease. Meet our distinguished advisors, clinicians, researchers, educators, and advocates. Combined, our group has over 1,000 peer-reviewed science publications. We know that trauma and health disparity are widespread. We can ask, could these problems be connected? There are thousands of research articles on the impact of trauma, yet there is still very limited training for physicians and health professionals. We want to pause for a moment and recognize that understanding the origins of disease requires talking frankly about trauma such as physical or sexual abuse, neglect, and more. Part of this discussion is about the cruel impact of discrimination. Trauma is personal for everyone. Then's website offers resources about the roots of trauma and about recovery. Now let's take a closer look at how medicine currently understands health and disease. Medicine needs new thinking, which means examining the underlying scientific assumptions of what is a disease and how disease occurs and what promotes healing. These principles apply to all diseases. Here we list some examples where extensive research already supports rethinking. Today our example will be hypertension or high blood pressure the most common chronic disease which affects almost half of American adults. Half a million Americans die each year from hypertension-related disease. The annual cost is $150 billion. Hypertension is common, deadly, and expensive. Let's look deeper. Currently, hypertension is seen as what is called a risk factor for heart disease and stroke. It is seen as a separate, less dangerous disease. This fact may seem like a small technicality, but stay tuned, and you will see why the idea of separate, disconnected diseases is a big mistake and leads to failure in prevention and treatment. Equally important, anyone who has experienced discrimination or any other severe trauma is at increased risk. Gay men are twice as likely as heterosexual men to be diagnosed with hypertension. Hispanic and indigenous peoples are more likely to have high blood pressure than whites. Black Americans have the highest rate of hypertension and the highest mortality. Black Americans are three times more likely to die of hypertension. How are trainees currently taught to understand this important disease? Hypertension is still seen as an idiopathic disease, no known cause. Treatment is exclusively focused on prescribing daily medication, and hypertension is seen as unrelated to patient life experience, sleep, or brain regulation. Is this state-of-the-art science? No. Over the past 30 years, hundreds of research articles 
have shown that the cause of hypertension is known. The cause is inflammation of the lining of blood vessels. Hypertension is closely tied to the patient's life experience, especially everyday discrimination. It turns out that what medicine thought of as a separate disease is actually a multi-system physiologic dysregulation starting in the brain. It is closely tied to restorative sleep and affects the entire body. Harvard Systems Biology and the National Institutes of Health have done careful research to determine how hypertension starts. The first step is dysregulation of the deep brain, which causes activation of cells in the bone marrow, resulting in inflammatory damage to blood vessels. Their research shows that brain hyperarousal actually starts years before hypertension is detected. America's current approach to hypertension is a tragedy. As you have seen, hypertension starts in the deep brain around an area called the amygdala. What activates the amygdala? Fear. As we mentioned, everyone who has experienced discrimination or other forms of trauma have higher rates of hypertension. This study showed that the transition from normal blood pressure to hypertension can start in black boys at age 8. Let's think about that for a moment. The year 2020 has shown the world why young black boys could be afraid. Tragically, now we can see how all these seemingly unrelated social problems like parental separation, family poverty, and racism are actually root causes of serious health problems. And we can see why out-of-date medical concepts must be changed. The example of hypertension shows us basic principles to apply to any disease. The brain and body are one interconnected system that is regulated through signals. A person's experience matters. Traumatic experience disrupts regulation, which eventually can lead to disease. We believe that applying these principles will help medical science find a new direction. We can see that diseases currently seen as separate are actually interconnected and have deep underlying causes, often linked to child development and childhood experience. Over the past 10 years, inflammation has been found to underlie most chronic illness. This new understanding of disease is not just better science. It provides hope. It points to new methods of diagnosis, prevention, and treatment. In the National Library of Medicine, anyone can find over 100,000 peer-reviewed research articles showing the connection between experience and health. We are sorry to report as medical school and university faculty that we are still unable to get our institutions to focus on this important science. What is the barrier and why are medical science and healthcare so stuck? And what can we do about it? In 2017, we created then a small nonprofit multidisciplinary think tank with our distinguished advisors. We have created a new innovative approach including free online education. We are asking essential questions about the structure of science and how to improve outcomes for our patients. Then has a three-part strategy. Our first step was to build a network of experts. We want to connect with and learn from others. We welcome students to join. Then second step was to create our knowledge library. Our third step is free online education. Gaining new knowledge requires mastery of new concepts. Our website includes an illustrated glossary, a curated bibliography, plus a curriculum of brief videos 
about core topics. How can you be involved? We invite you to join us in learning and sharing this important science. Please visit our website, subscribe to THEN's newsletter, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We can guarantee you this is the most exciting science of your life.